I was going to school at the University of Texas in Austin, and they uh, still had men they were shipping uh, over to Vietnam, and I was drafted. And uh, for two years, uh, active duty, uh, two years, then active reserve for two years, inactive uh, duty for two years. And it was interesting because I was a runner at UT Austin. A uh, runner in that I ran probably 70 miles a week, uh, which meant I was in good shape, which meant as being a draftee, I was for sure going to go to Vietnam because they need people that could run through the woods and, and do things physically. And I had many, many people in Burleson praying because they knew and I knew that I was going to go to Vietnam. And if that's where God was going to send me, that's where I was going to go. And uh, I was... Uh, sent to a Schaffenberg, Germany, which is just south of Frankfurt, Germany, about 30 kilometers, 35 kilometers. By the way, there's a Dairy Queen just above a Schaffenberg. Unbelievable. But uh, I went over there, and uh, the first uh, thing that was asked of me was, do I type? And I thought, well, that might be a pretty good duty. And I, I told this gentleman, sergeant, staff sergeant, I believe, that, that yes, sir, I knew this was an infantry unit area preparing men for Vietnam that, uh, that I could type. And he said, well, we just lost our supply clerk. Supply clerk, he had, he had died. And I said, well, if you need me to do that duty, I will do that. But then I got to thinking, wonder how he died. I might, I might want to know how he died. And sure enough, he had uh, made colonel's orderly one day, which meant he was the sharpest guard mount that night, answered specific questions on the uh, weapons and the uh, orders that we have. He went out and he got drunk and uh, he ate a bunch of pizza, a bunch of pizza and a vomit suffocation and he died. So as his body was being flown back to uh, America, I was assuming his duties, where I would become supply sergeant about four months later, okay? Uh, I would share with you about the Army as I saw it and knew it between 72 and 74. Again, we did have the draft, which is an extremely unpopular thing for a president or certain uh, political uh, figures in a country because a lot of moms want their children to stay home, maybe go to school. But I'd say that, uh, as Dale, you and I spoke of just a little earlier, sometimes a draft uh, can be a great benefit for a young man that needs some discipline or social skills. But uh, it, was, it was a good experience for me. My uh, duties were probably, probably mostly over the supplies, over our weapons also was under uh, my jurisdiction. Um, and uh, didn't have to go to Vietnam War, would have gone. Uh, I believe my unit was prepared in many, many ways, 72 to 74. It was uh, 1st Infantry, 4th Battalion, the same uh, unit that Audie Murphy was in. And uh, our motto was, uh, we serve and follow me. Follow me. Could mean going into a, a hot spot, follow me. And that was our our motto, our creed. I was able to travel uh, throughout the world as I was over there. I had, uh, when you're in the military, you have 30 days of uh, vacation time, which is wonderful. And I was able to go to places like uh, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, uh, Lebanon, Bethany, the Dead Sea, uh, all over the Holy Land. I also was able to uh, go into Switzerland and Austria Birch's Garden, Garmisch, uh, and I would not never, this country boy, this country, country boy uh, had traveled anywhere. In fact, when I came back home in 1974, my daddy picked me up at the Greyhound bus station in Fort Worth, Texas. What a joy it was to see my father. But I had actually seen more continents in the world than I had seen states in America when I got back in 1974. We went through extensive training with all of our uh, weapons. Uh, our unit was labeled uh, professional killers. That was our label because we were infantry. 
and we were trained, of course, to take all the weapons down, uh, put them back together in a matter of seconds, and uh, we had to do that, learn to do that.